He signed the cash money. There are plenty of fucking artists that signed the cash money, but they didn't get that kind of rollout. Do you know where they are now? That's right. You don't. You don't care. There is no reason to sign a contract in 2018. That is you willingly saying, I will pay you, daddy. Let's break some shit down right fast. Welcome back to the Big Face Podcast. I'm A.O. Canseco, fearless leader of A.O. Nation. And this is... If you have not got your Big Face Podcast hat for $25 or your Are You Serious t-shirt for $20, you need to go to paypal.me forward slash Are You Serious 10 Make sure you get your shit together, big homes and or big bitch. I need to talk to baby for a minute. Actually, let's not talk to baby. Glock now, let me talk to you, big home. I need to tell you what just I'm I'm happy for you because you just got two million. But um us as black people, a lot of times we speculate for a minute there, folk were saying Lil Pump got paid twenty million dollars and shit like that. Those are all motherfucking, you know, speculation and shit like that. Um, I wish I had my man with the apparatus here so he could really break that shit down and let it really be known about what truly happened in that situation as far as the money breakdown. Um, if I pay you $2 million over a course of, um, four years, meaning I lock you into a contract, kind of like what these motherfuckers is trying to do with me with this, like the YouTube, like, you know, if, if you follow me on uh, social media, you see that I get these offers all the time for uh, YouTube networks. Uh, they, they're saying, ah, oh, man, let me holler at you, man. I want to, uh, we want to push you forward, man. And we see your channel is uh, such a productive channel. And uh, we want to help you get to the next level and shit like that. What they're promising me is um, they're going to promote me. But promotion is one of those, you know what I'm saying, those fluid things. It's abstract. It's not, you know, like, you can't touch promotion. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you can't really quantify it because right now, or let's say when I be doing the live episodes and I go to different places in the hood and shit like that, passing out flyers, do a live show there and shit, that's promotion. But you can't really quantify it because you can't say, I'm going to go up here on this day at this time and I'm going to be up there for this long and I'm going to bring back this many people. For, I'm going to get this many subscribers from this situation. I'm going to get this many more sales uh, with my hats and my shirts. I'm going to get this many more donations on my PayPal. Because um, you don't know. You're going out there to promote, to spread awareness. And uh, a lot of artists don't come in the game with this understanding. And I'm, this, this episode is going to be for niggas in general. But as a nigga or a nigga bitch, you have someone in your family uh, that's close to you that's trying to do this music shit. And I need to, I need for you to learn from this Glock 9 situation as far as what just took place. Because your dream in your mind is to uh, get a $2 million deal. Like, motherfuckers, I'm not going to sign for nothing less than a meal and shit like that, which is a fucking lie. You know what I'm saying? You'll sign for goddamn $2,000 right now. That's how I broke you all. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the understanding of your current situation, like, self-awareness is the most important thing. So back to what I was saying about not being able to quantify promotion... Um, if you don't go out there and promote, one thing that you can quantify is you're going to stay in the same spot. If all you're doing is uh, social media promotion, you just you just online and on goddamn Facebook, uh, listen to my song, uh, man, go watch this video. You're on Instagram posting, you freestyling and, and uh, uh, you, you on this motherfucker taking pictures and shit like that. Writing shit on Twitter, you can do that shit as you much like as much as you want, but they're only gonna put you out so far. You're putting your work into a basket, and they're the one that's carrying the motherfucker. So you, the only thing that you're in control of is how much you put into that basket, not on how far they take the goddamn basket. That's how you should see it. Like 
you're putting um, your CDs in someone's car. You know what I'm saying? That's all you're doing. Mark Zuckerberg, he runs Facebook. Like, a story going viral means that it was in Memphis where it happened, but here in Alabama, like, everybody's talking about it and shit like that. That's, what's go that's what going viral is. Like, but in order for it to travel from Memphis to Alabama, that means someone has to connect to this person, someone has to see it there, someone has to see it right here, someone has to see it right here, you know what I'm saying? Not everyone's seen it. But even after you do that, what have you accomplished? Do you remember this nigga who, um, who did the, the little skit back in the day? Fuck, we ain't gotta go deep as that. Like, you remember 50 Tyson? You remember, uh, Ice J.J. Fish, Slim Jesus, all of these people? After you've gone viral and people get over that initial shock of, oh, man, this shit is funny as fuck and shit, it's over with. Designer is on DJ Small's eyes, which is, um, the... Um, rap version. You really can't. It's the rap version, the underground hip hop version of Love and Hip Hop. It's crazy. If you're on DJ Small's eyes, you're either there because you're an uh, underground artist trying to come up, or you're a big artist that's on his way down. Which is the same situation that DJ Vlad had. Like if you was on Vlad, that means that you know what I'm saying you either on the come up or you then fell off. You know what I'm saying? You fell off and this is just one of your stops on your way to rock bottom. You know what I'm saying? That's the same thing with Love and Hip Hop. Love and Hip Hop is for inspiring motherfuckers. If you never heard of them, they're on their way up. If you've heard of them, that means they were on their way out. Like Omarion, Bow Wow, Lil Fizz, and all these motherfuckers, Ray J, and shit like that. Um, but this is what takes place. Um, and usually it takes place because they don't understand the importance and how critical promotion is. Um, and they don't know how to do it. You come in the game, you just bullshit with your rap shit. Uh, hey, chicken eye, chicken hey. But labels are now allowing um, rappers with no talent, as we see with uh, Bad Baby, Cardi B, um, and a million other motherfuckers. Lil Pump, the list goes on, I'm not going to get into that. But they're allowing now people who have um, a following... To be artists because Atlantic, we got the writers, we got plenty of writers, we got plenty of stylists, we got plenty of people within the industry with a fucking record label. What does it take in order for an artist to blow up? Ever since Drake made it cool to have a ghostwriter, and that was a strategic goddamn plan by the goddamn labels. They were tired of having to go out, spend so much money on traveling, going and picking out an artist and then developing that artist and shit like that, making sure that he can do this, doing media training and all that shit like that. Why don't we goddamn just find any old average motherfucker off the street and just goddamn be able to fucking make them into a goddamn star? Like, if I can take my little nephew or, or just, I'm just go, able to go and find any run-of-the-mill kid in between the ages of um, 12 and, and 17, how is it that I can't focus with this motherfucker If I could just go pick out any motherfucker with a Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter following, they've already done the goddamn work. They're on these fucking uh, pages just fucking around posting retarded ass selfies and saying retarded. I can tell how stupid they are by the fucking post they make. Wouldn't it be great if I could just go and give that motherfucker a writer and just give them a goddamn song and make them a star? I can sign them as an artist. They've never made a song in their whole fucking life, but I can sign them as an artist because nowadays all an artist needs is antics and for people to be aware of their existence. People will follow motherfuckers like Boot Gang. They'll follow motherfuckers like Whoa Vicky. You will give these motherfuckers a platform. You will actually give these motherfuckers a platform. 
Lear Cohen was on the Breakfast Club, and, and me and my brother was arguing about this. What did he mean when he said we are trying to get them to pay with their eyes? I said that means all that needs to take place in order for you to get paid is for people to pay attention to you. The best goddamn example that I can give was Jocelyn Hernandez. This bitch didn't have a talent in the fucking world. All she was was a stripper. No different than Black China, Johnny Blaze, well the fuck, any stripper. Any fucking stripper can be a rapper now. Jocelyn Hernandez took fame when she got from goddamn being a stripper who reeled in a fucking trick, which was Stevie J. Sock, sock. Hey, look, stupid nigga. Look, look, nigga. Look, nigga. Look, I don't wanna, I don't wanna beat your ass on camera. Get the fuck in that goddamn room, nigga. She reeled in a duck. And came on the show as this nigga's side chick. Now we got into the age of glorified side bitches. Glorified side bitches. Pay no attention to the fact that I just broke up a fucking family. Pay no attention to the fact that a whole relationship, a whole, you know what I'm saying? Parenthood. A child's life was damn near ripped apart for the whole world to see. Nobody pays attention. Nobody sees that. That Stevie J and Mimi had a fucking child. They had a child. Have you ever met someone that that went through a divorce as the child? Like, uh, yeah, my parents got divorced when I was like five. Have you ever, you know what I'm saying, seen the pain? In their eyes when they make that statement. For some reason we don't look at these things. That we know are taking place. Like consciously you have to know. Or subconsciously you have to know. That if a family. Which is a. Male. Female. Child. If the male and the female. Part ways. The adults part ways. That child is now torn also. And they made you laugh and smile. That was your entertainment and you were entertained by that. You bitches will still patronize this fat bitch Mona Scott. You will still get this bitch paid knowing that all she does is ruin people's lives. People's lives are ruined. Whether or not they're getting paid. Reputations are being made. Legacies are being made. You will never live this down. You will always and forever be Tia fucking Marie. The bitch with the, the sex tape. Did you hear about that? Tia Marie. Sex tape. Turned out to be fake. She did that shit all for the publicity. Tia Marie is... Like, do you know what songs this motherfucker saying? Just that one thing that got me tripping. Like, this whole, like, was, she seemed to be so upscale. Turned out to be a nothing-ass bitch. This is where they promote. And advocate for plastic surgery. Yet. The other side of that coin is never shown until now. K. Michelle got a show coming out called something about, it's something about what happens with ass shots and how that shit destroy your whole, like, all the shit, all the complication that you go through, can't even walk, stink pussy, you know what I'm saying, dry pussy, all kind of shit. The pain, silicone poisoning, but this is a whole nother situation where the other side is not shown and we go back and you wonder, how in the fuck, what the fuck does this got to do with goddamn um, little Kodak Black, which is Glock 9? What the fuck they got to do with him signing a $2 million deal with Birdman? 
And once again, I tell you, you have a family member or a close friend who wants to do this rap shit. But don't know nothing about no goddamn promotion. Don't know nothing about, you know what I'm saying, actually getting folks to listen to their music on their own. So, that, so, therefore, they will always be subject to being up under somebody. Someone will always have to have a hold on them. They'll never be truly independent, which is the only way you're going to make money. I don't give a fuck how much you get paid today. There's plenty of motherfuckers that got paid today and are broke today. You understand? Do you understand? It's plenty of motherfuckers that got paid today on that day they got paid. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day, let you would take the football players back. And you know, by, by these standards that we're, we're talking about, there will be no one that's broke that ever went to the NBA, that ever went to the NFL. And I won't even say rappers because we know many of fucking broke rappers. I'm taking it to when you actually got a fucking pension. And you still fucking broke. Money coming in and you still broke. War set. Listen here, dog. There is no way around learning experience. Motherfuckers, you can try to fast track your way through college, but you won't get what it is that you need. This rap shit, this entertainment shit is a craft in itself. It's a art in itself. And if you don't learn it, someone who knows it, who did go through the motherfucking shit they had, who passed their courses, who took the time to actually learn what's really going on, will always be on top of you. You will never be self-sufficient. You will never be an actual boss. You will always work for someone. And this is what comes... We understand what Birdman does. Even after understanding what the fuck Birdman does. The only goddamn reason he paid $2 million is to show people I can do good business. Because he knew goddamn well I wasn't doing good business. Did you see who was in that guy? How the fuck... Why does, when does that take place, dog? This was a spectacle. The last artist, I, I'm, I'm not going to say the last artist. Do you remember when Sire the Kid? It's an artist named Sire the Kid. Go look him up. He signed the cash money. There are plenty of fucking artists that signed the cash money, but they didn't get that kind of rollout. Do you know where they are now? That's right. You don't. You don't care. There is no reason to sign a contract in 2018. That is you willingly saying, I will pay you, daddy. I will pay you, daddy, for no fucking reason. When the record labels come knocking and telling you, we will use our resources to get you hot, they are saying that to you as if you're not already hot. But that's a contradiction because if you weren't already hot, they wouldn't have came knocking. It's all a mind game. I'm giving you $2 million today because I know I'm going to make that two million. I'm going to make my $2 million back in two fucking months. Spend your $2 million how you will. But when it's gone, don't come asking me for a goddamn thing unless you're ready to sign for some more years. You are now paying with your life. This is selling your soul at its finest. Because now you work for me. That money that I just gave you is to ensure that you put cash money on your back and take me to the next level. Because without you, I'm going to stay flat as a motherfucking pancake. But without me, you continue to goddamn rise. But they probably, like, when you get in this office. <coughs> when you get in these offices with these labels. You, you're, you're walking into a situation that's hostile. 
Could you imagine being in a war with a nigga that you beefing with and shit like that, and that nigga smiling as he's shooting at you? That would kind of make you like, oh shit, what the fuck going on? This nigga must like this type of shit. What kind of nigga like, what kind of nigga, this the, this the most hostile, this the scariest moment of my fucking life. This nigga smiling and laughing. Like he enjoys this shit. Most of y'all say, that's nigga I fuck with right there. Because you're thinking about a time where there's perpetual war. I was telling my brother once again. What good is a shooter in peace times? In times of peace, what is the use of a fucking shooter? A true shooter. A, a Mad Max character. Someone who, if you don't keep him sedated, he's going to click. He becomes a liability, a threat. Instead of a fucking... I'm not going there. You motherfucker just trying to fast track it. And you're going to lose every time. You haven't realized this yet. You haven't been in the street long enough to understand that you can take five fast steps, but you're going to take eight long ones backward. You can take five fast steps forward, but you're going to take eight long ones backwards. A real street nigga understands this. A real street nigga fears and is weary of fast, large sums of money. They, they get like, what the fuck going on? Something wrong here. It's something wrong here. It's too much money. And ain't, I ain't have to work for it. I know something come with this shit. You find two bricks of coke in the woods in a bag. Dog, you gonna be skitched out. Like, most motherfuckers gonna get the fuck up and leave. Because they know, like, don't shit come sweet. Ain't shit, know what I'm saying? Don't nothing come without a price. Ain't nothing free. And the label. Think about this. How many... Hot artists are there over the age of 25 that that have shown that they know how to promote. This is a nigga named uh, One Take Timmy. One Take Timmy, I don't know where the fuck he's from, but this nigga is fucking crazy. Think about how many artists there are over the age of 25 that have shown that they can promote themselves, got crazy talent. They saying some of their shit. Why the fuck didn't they get signed? Why didn't baby go take the camera and, you know what I'm saying, show that he's signing them? Because he's no different than Leo Cohen or any other fucking record label exec. We don't give a fuck about the goddamn, about nobody in the goddamn. We don't give a fuck who, who the fuck die down there in the fucking, you know what I'm saying? Coliseum and shit like that. Word to Robert. We don't give a fuck about who die down there. It's about us. Leo Cohen said, I got to feed my family. Fuck what y'all going through down there. Without saying it, Baby and every other record label is saying the same fucking thing. So as much as I understand that Leo Cohen is a fucking racist, white supremacist, culture vulture, I got to salute him the same way I salute Trump for showing you who the fuck he is. You have to respect the enemy who choke. Like, I'm telling you what it is, and I'm standing on that. I'm not no, I'm not going, oh, uh, no, nah, I'm this right here, and I'm this right here. A nigga who, who tell you who the fuck he is, man, come on, dog. Respect. There are situations in life, I, they, look here. There is a, a channel on YouTube. Um, it's called Jaleel Lee's uh, Anti-Bullying uh, Self-Defense. He has a channel where he shows um, young kids how to protect themselves from, you know, like the, the thugs in the street and shit like that. He's autistic. He's autistic. He's beating the odds. He's showing you this and this. Like he's showing you what the fuck to do, like the, a horse stance and all this shit like this. How to keep folks off you and shit like that. Y'all go check his channel out too. Um, Jaleel Lee's self-defense class. Check that shit out. 
this is what I'm trying to give you at this very moment. I'm trying to show you how to defend yourself mentally from these motherfuckers because I guarantee you, I guarantee you, it will be less than a fucking year before you hear this nigga Glock 9 telling you how fucked up cash money is and how this is not what the fuck he thought it was. And guarantee you, it's going to be another nigga around your hood somewhere, around your city, who going to sign a fucking deal with another label and feel like, oh, this different because this ain't baby. This different because this ain't Leo Cohen. This ain't no culture vulture. Because you're not understanding that these motherfuckers is cut from the same cloth. Go watch the goddamn video where I'm telling you that all these motherfuckers is on the golf course. It's the same fucking person. I told you, think about how mind-blowing it would be if you found out that the same person who funded Hillary Clinton's campaign funded Donald Trump's campaign. And that's what it is. The same person who owns Atlantic owns Def Jam. The same person who's, who owns Instagram owns Facebook. Forget that you ever heard of fucking Mark Zuckerberg. That's a fucking movie. Just, just think about it. The same person that owned Walmart owned Winn-Dixie. Same person that owned McDonald's owned Burger King. I'm probably just crazy. Big Face Podcast. Please talk to somebody. Make sure you hit the PayPal. I'll see y'all in a minute. Love.